Hello your friends. Welcome to my channel. So far we have discussed about so many topics and today we are going to discuss about a very important muscle. Actually the boys they love so much and they want to show such a muscle. And that muscle is nothing but the biceps brachii. Now we are going to see the origin, insertion, nerve supply, action and also the clinical testing of that biceps brachii. So let me show that muscle origin insertion nerve supply and before going to explore this please subscribe to my channel so coming to the origin of the biceps brachii as the name says that it is a biceps means two heads so biceps it is having two heads one is long head another one is short head let me show you that and this is the long head and here is a short head this is a short head and this is a long head now the long head is arising from supraglenoid tubercle supraglenoid tubercle and the tendon is running into the shoulder joint actually under the deltoid muscle you can identify this tendon of biceps brachii long tendon of biceps brachii and that long tendon of biceps brachii is running uh, forwards and laterally then it is entering into the groove called as bicipital groove or it is also called as intertubercular sulcus of the humerus where it is present between the two tubercles that is greater tubercle and this is the lesser tubercle so between these two tubercles we can identify the sulcus in the sulcus the long tendon of biceps brachii is running and it is garnered by a ligament called as transverse humeral ligament transverse humeral ligament and this long head which is running down and is going to join with the short head the short head is arising from the coracoid process of scapula coracoid process of the scapula the lateral border of the coracoid process of the scapula and the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula the short head of biceps brachii is arising and this short head which is running down the tendon actually when you see the muscle here biceps brachii the all the muscle fibers are not present at the origin so it is tendinous origin tendinous origin you can identify the tough cord like structure over here and the fibrous part which is present at the origin of the short head of biceps brachii so the fibrous part which is present at the origin after that two bellies we can identify over here and the two bellies they are going to join with each other and form a single belly and the single belly which is running down and at the insertion it is going down and reaching to the radius that is short head now under this where we can identify where we can identify this long head and short head so as i have shown you the individual biceps brachii individual biceps brachii in the previous slide now this is the left sided specimen and i just want to show where exactly this biceps brachii origin is present so as i told you earlier short head is coming from the coracoid process almost present over here just below the clavicle we can identify the coracoid process here okay so the anterior fibers of deltoid and the lateral fibers of deltoid and the spectralis major muscle fibers they're all covering this two heads of biceps brachii so if we wanted to see the two heads of biceps brachii we need to separate these two muscles anterior fibers of deltoid and also the pectoralis major insertion then only we can identify so let me separate these two muscles here i have separated the pectoralis major and this is the pectoralis minor so we need to separate that also now we have separated both pectoralis major here and pectoralis minor and here you can identify the biceps brachii muscle this is the biceps brachii muscle now after that after that where we can here you can identify the biceps brachii and this is a short head and this is a long head of biceps brachii and both are joining together and forms the single belly single belly and what about the insertion of the biceps brachii so the biceps brachii biceps brachii which is running down and enters into the cubital fossa and enters into the cubital fossa after that the tendon of the biceps brachii tendon of the biceps brachii which is getting inserted which is getting inserted to the radial tuberosity radial tuberosity so try to find out here this is the left sided specimen left hand so this is the left uh, left upper limb specimen and this is the left arm and this is the left forearm and this is the left sided cubital fossa 
So the biases bracket which is running down and it is getting inserted to the radial tuberosity. So as the radius is present laterally, we can identify this tendon of the biceps brachii which is reaching to the radial tuberosity. Then after that, at the place of insertion, at the place of insertion of the biceps brachii, it is going to form another fibrous sheet. So there's a tendon of biceps brachii and where it is going to reach to the radial tuberosity. And another part of the insertion, the biceps brachii, not only it is reaching to the radial tuberosity, it is forming a fibrous sheet called as bicipital aponeurosis. Bicipital aponeurosis. So this bicipital aponeurosis, it is protecting two important structures in the cubital fossa. Two important structures in the cubital fossa. One is median nerve, then the brachial artery median nerve and the brachial artery they are guarded or protected by this bicipital aponeurosis so this aponeurosis the fibrous sheet of the biceps brachii which is running medially and then runs posteriorly and reaches to the posterior border of ulna where it is going to join with the deep fascia where it is going to join with the deep fascia that is uh, anti-brachial fascia where it is going to join with the deep fascia or anti-brachial fascia and it is reaching to the posterior border of ulna. So that is the fate of the biceps brachii. So the tendon of biceps brachii. And here you can see the aponeurosis, bicipital aponeurosis. Okay. Now, what is the nerve supply of this biceps brachii? Nerve supply of the biceps brachii is musculocutaneous nerve, which is a branch of lateral cord of the brachial plexus. So before it supplying to the biceps brachii, this musculocutaneous nerve is supplying to the coracobrachialis. Then after that, it is coming outside from the coracobrachialis and supplies to the undersurface of the biceps brachii. Actions of the biceps brachii. What are the actions? Actions are it is a strong supinator of the forearm. When elbow is flexed, the action is used in screwing movements. When the screw is getting tightened, tightening the screw, then the biceps brachii is acting over there. And it is a powerful flexor of the forearm when the elbow is extended. And it is also a weak flexor of shoulder joint. It is a weak flexor of shoulder joint. Let me show you the action of this biceps brachii and how we test the biceps brachii. Now moving to the clinical testing, I will show the clinical testing how we will perform the clinical test of biceps brachii muscle. So coming to the biceps brachii clinical test, how to test this biceps muscle. I already have shown you the origin, insertion. Now let me show you the testing of it. So the action is, it is a powerful supinator. It is a powerful supinator and it is a flexor. So flexor of elbow. So you have to ask the patient to flex the elbow and at the same time the forearm should be in supine position. Forearm should, uh, should be in supine position. And you have to hold the wrist and ask him to flex the elbow. You have to hold it tightly and pull it. Pull it. And you have to ask him to flex the elbow. Okay. So I am holding my wrist like this and I am just testing this biceps. Okay, I'm trying to flex the elbow. So you can see the bulge over here. So uh, if the bulge is not formed, if the bulge is not formed, when you are pulling the wrist, when you are pulling the wrist, if the bulge is not formed, it says that the musculocutaneous nerve damage might be there. Musculocutaneous nerve damage might be there. So as it is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve, damage of the musculocutaneous nerve causes the paralysis of the biceps brachii muscle. Thank you friends.